coach huddled us all up, you know, break out of practice. Uh, but he said he had a, a guest he'd like for us to meet. We looked down the street and coming up the street to the field is a, a motorcade of black SUVs. They pull up to the field right next to us. And, our, you know, our, our team's all looking around like, what, what is going on here? Who, who is this? They open the door and, and out steps Muhammad Ali. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Awesome Inks Podcast, where we highlight people pursuing their definition of, you guessed it, awesome. So buckle up and get ready for some more success story adventures and failures from Kentucky's tech and entrepreneur community. Hey, y'all. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Awesome Inks Podcast. I'm sitting down with Maybe my all-time favorite South Oldham High School football player, alongside Nick Such. It's it, you guys are up there. Ooh. But Bennett, Bennett was uh, one of my teammates for uh, Ultimate Frisbee. That's what it was. Ultimate Frisbee at the Awesome Inc. Summer Retreat 2022 style. And uh, today we're going to be sitting down talking about his company, Active Therapy Systems, and we're going to go maybe somewhat into the uh, the Joe Rogan experience type feel with just getting schooled on some medical stuff. Uh, that might be too intense. So if you freaked out, we'll keep that was a, a high joke. Level. Yeah, we'll keep a high level because Ben, you could easily school me. So my only ask is talk to me like I'm a fourth grader because you're going to teach me a lot about neurological disorders and things in physical therapy that I have zero, <laughs> zero clue about. So first up, uh, why don't you tell the folks who are listening a little bit, a little bit about who you are and What's your background? And that'll be a good uh, a good lead way to where we are today and why we're talking. Yeah, sure. Thanks, G. Appreciate you having me, man. Um, so like you said, I'm Bennett Gatto. I uh, grew up here in the state of Kentucky. Um, I've always had a, a background in sports. I grew up playing football, baseball, wrestling. Um, I went to Georgetown College for undergrad, uh, Tiger Pride, baby. Uh, played football at Georgetown, and um, I think that's – being at Georgetown and, and some of the experiences that I had there actually led me to where I am today. Um, kind of was the, the spark uh, that, that really got the company going. Um, so I'll get into that here. here shortly. That's cool. Well, l- let me ask. I, I know I just said it a minute ago that we're talking about physical therapy. That, that's the main problem that your, your team focuses on. Did you have any... Uh, any wicked or pretty bad injuries playing sports that, that were maybe some of the early, early moments that made you realize, you know, one day I want to solve this type of problem. Yeah, sure. Um, so surprisingly, nothing crazy. Um, I actually broke the, my lower leg in my sophomore year of high school uh, in wrestling practice, of all things, not football. So um, that was a little bit different. But other than that, nothing more than, you know, your normal sit out a week or so kind of thing. So I know, you know, my knees are healthy. My shoulders are healthy. My back's healthy. Um, my, my head may be a different story down the road. We'll see. Um, but no, no, no significant injuries, uh, other than, than rehabbing the leg. Um, and that, that was my first experience with, with PT, but I don't think that's really what brought me into to PT. I always thought that I would go into the sports world and do strength and conditioning. Um, so that's kind of where I had my sights set during undergrad. Um, and then following undergrad, uh, I kind of got some other experiences that led me to, to dealing with the Parkinson's world, um, doing PT in the, the neurological space. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's, let's go right on that journey. So you thought you'd be doing strength and conditioning, probably in the sports world. You, you probably figured, oh yeah, I'll be, you know, like working with like the Bengals or the Jets, like, you know, getting all these NFL players yoked. What, what changed on that pathway to helping people with Parkinson's getting into a different I get line of the medical world. Uh, if that's maybe the, the best way to say that, yeah, give it, give us some insight. So what was that, you know, that fork in the road and then you took this direction? Yeah. So, uh, my major at, at Georgetown was kinesiology and exercise science. Um, I always thought I'd go into to strength and conditioning for football. Um, one day after practice, uh, so give you guys a little background. We do, uh, we have a digital health platform, uh, with remote patient monitoring for people with Parkinson's disease. So my experience with Parkinson's dates back to my time at Georgetown. It was uh, summer camp my junior year. Um, practice ended and coach huddled us all up, you know, break out of practice. Uh, but he said he had a, a guest he'd like for us to meet. We looked down the street and coming up the street to the field 
is a, a motorcade of black SUVs. They pull up to the field right next to us. And, every, you know, our, our team's all looking around like, what, what is going on here? Who, who is this? They open the door and, and out steps Muhammad Ali. That was a very, very surreal uh, but humbling experience to see a legend, uh, you know, one of the most iconic athletes of all time uh, standing in front of you, but not able to control himself. He, he Muhammad Ali passed away with Parkinson's disease. Um, this was later in his, his disease state. And you could tell the disease had just taken control of his life. He required help to get out of the vehicle. Uh, he, he could not stand and, and actually talk to us without someone helping him, holding him up. And, you know, sitting there as a, a kid that grew up outside of Louisville, knowing who Muhammad Ali is, you know, I don't get very starstruck, but seeing him, it was, it, it struck some fear in me, really. Um, and that's something that, that has stuck with me. So that was my first experience with, with Parkinson's. Um, you know, fast forward, I graduate from Georgetown. Uh, I go intern with Texas Tech University's football team and their strength and conditioning program. Um, that was a great experience. I learned a lot. Uh, I got to see, you know, a different side of, of the game of football at a, at a higher level. Um, I realized that wasn't necessarily the, the lifestyle that I wanted to pursue. Um, but I did see an opportunity uh, during that experience to bridge the gap between football and medical. And I thought that, that physical therapy would be a good way to do that. So I come back to Kentucky. Um, I apply to, to PT school. I don't get in my first time around. Um, I apply again. I go volunteer with a group based out of Columbus, Ohio, to boost my application status and, and get volunteer hours. Um, and the group that I volunteered with, uh, Delay the Disease, is a community-based group exercise program specifically for people with Parkinson's disease. So I kind of gravitated back towards that. Um, that experience taught me a lot about working with individuals who were actually experiencing the disease, fighting the disease. Um, I think what drew me towards that and, and, and really brought me in was it's just like training athletes, except the game's changed. It's not the game of football. It's not the game of baseball. It's the game of life. These folks are showing up every single day to that class, to that session, to, to that, to that workout, fighting to keep their independence, fighting to keep their life. And I think that, that struck me. And I, I think that's, that's really what brought me to um, really find this population of people so enjoyable to work with. So we move forward 2014, I get into physical therapy school at the University of Kentucky. Um, throughout my schooling, I didn't think a whole lot about Parkinson's. Uh, you know, we didn't, we don't learn much about it during school. Um, but anytime we did talk about it, I'd be the, the student to get called on to talk about it, which was kind of cool. In 2016, my second clinical rotation, uh, I was down at a neurological rehab institute in Tupelo, Mississippi. We got to work with a lot of patients who had Parkinson's. Um, and so I was able to apply things that I had learned from volunteering those couple of years in Columbus, Ohio, apply that into, um, you know, the clinical setting and, and, you know, treating these patients, which I thought was very valuable. Um, it was, it was, again, just a great learning experience. But what I noticed down there was the way that Parkinson's was being treated and the way that the healthcare system was handling the, the method of requiring folks to come into the clinic multiple times a week for extended periods of time, it became impossible. The burdens that these, these folks would face with, with travel, um, the time required, especially if they needed a, a driver to help them get into the clinic, the, the costs associated with those treatment sessions, um, both from the, the patient side, but also the, the healthcare system side, um, all, all of that became so burdensome that ultimately the, the patient couldn't continue with uh, extended bouts of therapy. And what would happen is that after a month, it, they'd end up going back home, not continue on with their exercises. Accountability and, and compliance was poor. Um, three to four months later, that person would be referred to PT again, and the whole process would start over. And so it became this big cycle. And I, I saw this and, um, you know, I started thinking, there's got to be a better way to do this. There has to be a way to bring this treatment into the home 
but be able to monitor it and progress these folks along um, because everybody's unique. Every disease, uh, every person experiencing the disease experiences it in a different way. So what works for one person may not work exactly the same for another. So things need to be tailored. They need to be monitored. They need to be individualized. Um, and so that was December of, of 2016. I come back to Kentucky. Um, we have about eight months of school left. And my focus kind of starts shifting from away from school and towards, hey, I, I, I see this problem. I got to figure out how to solve it. Um, you know, the, these folks, they need control of their life back. And, and I think I can find a way to give it to them. And so um, I graduate school 2017, um, August of 2017, graduate. October 2017, I start the company Active Therapy Systems. Dove, <laughs> dove head first, didn't know anything about starting a company, didn't know anything about you know, what that actually takes on the legal side, the business side, the financial side, nothing. I just knew, hey, there's a major problem right now and there's got to be a way to solve it. And so in 2017, I started recruiting um, so some people around Lexington that, hey, do you know anything about software? Do you know anything, anything about hardware? Um, kind of funny story. I had the, the, the first thing that I did is... I said, hey, we need to put lights on a wall. We, we use playing cards. We use post-it notes on a wall. And we use those to be able to, to provide cues to, to patients, um, which would require them to, to do certain movements. And I said, we, we, we need to make this an automated uh, process. So I ordered a Dance Dance Revolution mat off of Amazon. I took it apart. I take it apart thinking, all right, I'm going to have some cords. I'm going to have some wires. I'm going re to rewire some things. I'm going to be able to push a button, and I'm going to see a light light up on the wall. I open it up, and it's just one sheet of plastic. And so there's, there's nothing there. And so anybody with any engineering or electrical background is probably laughing right now because they, they know that all the, the – now that I know – all of the electrical circuits are printed on the mat. It's not an actual wire. And so I'm like, I have no idea where to go. So anyways, I started recruiting some software, some software guys, some uh, hardware guys. Um, they they kind of give me a guidance on this. These are some things we need to do. This is what we need to look at. So we didn't have any money. We had nothing really, but we had a good idea. Um, in 2018, we were awarded a National Science Foundation grant for our idea um, <clears throat> we were matched by funds from the state of Kentucky that allowed us to hire a team. I hired the wrong team. Um, we had a lot of people working with us for us that lost sight of the vision. Um, and I just did not do a good, of do a good job of reeling everybody back in. Um, it was a, a very, very difficult learning experience for me. Uh, it was a very expensive learning experience for me. Um, it'll be, you know, it, it'll be a, a fun story to tell when we get down the road and it, it's just a, you know, a little speed bump along the, the, the path to where we're headed. Um, but in that moment, it seemed like the biggest problem in the world. Uh, we almost went bankrupt. You know, we blew through almost $400,000, went bankrupt, didn't have even any idea where to go from here. I fired the whole team, got rid of everybody. Um, basically had to start over. COVID hits, the physical therapy clinics are shut down. Um, I'm not able to go see patients anymore. Been making enough money to be able to keep the lights on at the office, be able to, to pay the bills that we did have. Um, no, no employees at this point, nobody's working with us. So it's just kind of me, the office, um, and uh, kind of the, um, you know, trying to figure out what, what do we do next? So I sit down. Uh, I've, write another grant proposal to National Science Foundation in the midst of COVID. Um, in the meantime, while we're waiting on, on that, the group in Columbus, Ohio that I had volunteered with, I had kind of rekindled the, the um, relationship with those guys. They, their classes all got shut down around the country. They, you know, all the gyms, all the clinics, everybody's in the same boat. Everybody's locked at home. Well, with Parkinson's disease, you can't take breaks of exercise. Exercise is, is your medicine. So we put our heads together. We immediately turned to an online platform um, in the midst of, I think it was April 2020, within a week of the gyms, the, the clinics being shut down, we started offering online exercise classes. Um, we grew that, started charging for memberships in May of 2020. 
So I built a, I taught myself how to build a website. So I <laughs> figured that piece out. Um, we started selling memberships. We, you know, we weren't making a ton of money, but we were proving the concept that, hey, we can get into the homes with online exercise. Uh, people were forced to go virtual. So, you know, our demographic is 50, 60, 70 years old. Um, they were forced to have to use Zoom, have to use a, a computer, uh, which, you know, you, you laugh, but in the moment that, that was a, that was a hurdle and that was a big hurdle. And that was something that we, you know, we were going to have to battle. We didn't think we we're going to have to battle it yet. Um, so anyways, throughout 2020, we're, we're bringing members on we're we're getting better at doing online classes. Um, but we proved the concept people want it, they need it and they'll pay us for it and they'll stick around. Um, so we were finally awarded our next grant from the national science foundation. Um, and that gave us the opportunity to gave me a second chance to, to rehire a team. Um, this time, I I learned, a learned a few lessons. Um, we hired, uh, a hardware engineer, a software engineer. Um, that was a, that was an opportunity to, uh, basically a second chance. Um, fast forward now over the last year and a half of, of development, um, we've continued to grow our, our online platform for memberships, and now we're preparing to launch the, the platform that we've developed, which allows us to build personalized exercise sessions specifically for, um, you know, the needs and the deficits that an individual is facing. We can do telehealth PT appointments. We can track and monitor activity levels. We can track and monitor sleep. We can track and monitor your, your blood pressure and your trends with your heart rate. We can look at all of this data, and now we can put it together um, and, and that allows us to, to personalize and build out, curate exactly what you need as an individual. Um, and we've been able to do that all over the last year and a half. Um, so there are a lot of lessons learned early on, uh, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> a, definitely. Lot, a lot of expensive lessons learned. Yeah. Early on, um, the team that we have now is, is they see the vision, they understand where we're headed. Um, I, I think we're in a, we're in a very good spot and. Uh, over the last, you know, nine months of, of the fellowship, I think we've made some significant progress. Um, just the connections that we've made, uh, the, the accountability that the, the fellowship holds you to has been very beneficial. Um, we, we were a part of the Accelerate Health Accelerator out of Louisville in fall of 2021. Um, so, you know, we've had some, some amazing opportunities, uh, just, you know, come our way and, I don't think it was by chance. I think we're, you know, we're here for a reason. Great. That was, that was your whole story right there. That, that was awesome, man. To go back to a couple of things that you, you talked about, it was, it was, uh, it was a comment you made about when you spent time with the, the Texas Tech Red Raiders, baby. The Red Raiders. And so, yeah, just, just getting an insight. You said, I got to see a, a new side of the game at a higher level. And what's, what's cool about that is, you know, we can all think about, the glitz and the glam and the the lights and, you know, all the stuff of what you want. But you probably got to see a lot of the the grind that most people don't see. And you being in the health space, especially with athletes, you probably know the the diet restrictions or the intense weight workouts and the intense recovery that has to go on. And you're like, man, it's just that's not for me. And I think that's one of the best things about life, but also in the entrepreneurial space is when you try something and you don't like it baby, you got to pivot, you know, you're onto something new and, uh, keeping on with some of the football analogies. When you mentioned, uh, people are fighting for their life. You know, one of my favorite athletes is Inky Johnson. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible player. And, uh, that hit that happened to him when he was, a, I think he was a safety or linebacker for, uh, for university of Tennessee against the air force. And that, that hit on impact almost killed him. Like what happened with, uh, DeMar. Yeah. Um, Scary. Yeah, it's it's scary, but it's a very but scary instance. He's a he is now a, a great motivational speaker. Goes to a lot of organizations, a lot of teams, and talks about. Hey, you know, for me, football was life. Uh, you know, football was life. If you've seen uh, Ted, <laughs> Ted Lasso, but Inky Johnson saying, "Hey, you know, one day the game of football was you know this big, and, I, and I'm spread my my arms apart as far as possible was this big, and the next day the game of football was this big in my life, like you know, little little violin uh, hand signal." And just to know, just to realize, you know, things can change in an instance and you are getting to meet people at that need is such a surreal 
such a surreal way to way to spend your time and to live on mission. And, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear how that has even developed you as an athlete, because now you're not necessarily playing on the field under the lights. It's this this business you're building has become your sport. So so talk yeah, a little absolutely. bit about maybe how maybe and this is might sound kind of weird to talk about on an entrepreneur podcast, but how your heart has changed from wanting to do things, you know, cool in sports and, you know, all the testosterone to, <laughs> hey, Nick, now I'm actually... I get stoked to help 50 and 60 and 70 year olds make sure that they can walk and be independent. Like, yeah, just, just share a little bit more about the, uh, you know, what hits you in the heart. That's, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, I think, I think health is something that we all take for granted, um, until it's not there. And it's, uh, you know, I think the, the situation with Damar really, really brings that home. Um, Inky really brings that home that it's, it's something that we see, every day with our, with our patients, it's, you know, Parkinson's is a gradual disease, but when you get that diagnosis from a doctor, it's, it's devastating. Everything in your life changes at that point. And it, it takes many, many people extended periods of time to, to grasp and, and figure out, okay, what is my next step? What do I do next? Um, you know, I, I, fortunately the, decision to fight the disease goes quite a long way. Um, and, and we know we can help people fight it. And so, you know, I haven't experienced what that feels like that diagnosis. I hope that I never do. Um, but I know how important it is for us knowing what we know, the ability to be able to do what we do, how important it is for us to be there. So that when someone does get that diagnosis and they, do make that decision to fight the disease, to, to take control of their life and, and not let the disease take control of them, that we're there for them and, and that we know how to help, help move them along throughout that process. And, um, you know, I think that's as a clinician and, and even just as a person, um, I, I think that's where I've grown the most. And, you know, I think all of my patients, I feel like I consider them all family. Like, you know, we're, we're friends. We're, you know, I'm not just a, I'm not just a therapist and yeah, you're not just a patient. Exactly. Like we're buddies and it's a relationship that we're building because I don't anticipate you being gone next year. I anticipate in the next five years, like I might be going to your wedding or maybe you're coming to mine. Um, you know, it, we become family. And, and I think that's the mentality that, that, you know, I, I guess I learned that from Jackie and, and David, my partners in Columbus. Um, yeah, I think that's a, it's, it's very meaningful. Uh, super cool, man. Super cool. And again, just to, just get a different insight. Cause obviously as Kentucky entrepreneur, you are in a, a pretty, a pretty cool space. That's a nice mix of healthcare and, and relationships. You mentioned you have an online, a remote monitoring system to help your patients. And you mentioned that, uh, the COVID, the COVID years were, really the catalyst for that. So talk about what it looks like to scale up your platform and, and build that out to be a more robust tool. Cause I also also imagine as you help people, you're, you're getting customers. You probably have some com combination of uh, B2B or B2C uh, relationships. Yeah. So just give yeah. a little insight to like what building out your platform would look like and, and acquiring customers looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Active Therapy Systems is is the company, and our first brand, what we launched our online classes uh, under, is the the brand Total Health Works. Um, so we we offer, like I said, online exercise classes, uh, eight classes live every week. We have over three hundred on demand classes and workouts. Um, that was kind of the the proof of concept, but that's also been what's really kind of kept us going um, over these last couple of years. It's proven that there is a need. It's, it's allowed us to understand how do we go out and find customers? Who do we talk to? Where do they hang out? What do they want? What do they need? Um, it's given us an opportunity to, to gain lots and lots of feedback. I'm on the phone multiple times a week with my customers solving, you know, customer support problems, but that means I get to ask them questions. So I get to find out what are, what are you enjoying? What are you not enjoying? What problems are you having? How can we help you and make that better? Um, so that's, that's one side of it. Now we are preparing to launch our total PT connect platform, which kind of takes those online classes and, um, you know, on demand workouts to a whole new level. Now we're able to personalize sessions specific to you instead of a one size fits all. 
It's this, this workout, this therapy session is curated specifically for what you need. Um, and we, we do a lot of that by, uh, setting goals with you, finding out what are, what are your motivations, building that relationship, having regular routine communication with your therapist or your trainer. Um, and then we look at the, the, the physiological data that, that we're gathering from you, your heart rate, your blood pressure, your sleep quality. So we, we look at all that data and then through that, we're able to personalize, uh, you know, the best therapy, um, program for, for you. Uh, in addition, we're able to communicate that information to your physician or to your neurologist so we can help them with their clinical decision-making, um, which ultimately leads to better outcomes for our patients. So we, um, we are in the process of, of learning now transitioning from more of a development mode, um, and understanding, you know, what is it that we need to build out to help our customers? Now we're transitioning into that sales and, and marketing piece. So, um, right now we're targeting physicians uh, neurologist, movement disorder docs, um, groups like that who can start to give us referrals. Uh, in addition, we go to places like support groups or community events that um, are put on by either Parkinson support groups or, or foundations, things like that. Um, so that's, that's how we've been communicating and getting in touch with our, with our customers. And that's, uh, you know, the goal for 23 is is really um, improve that customer acquisition process and and make more people aware of the things that we can offer them. Hearing that is really helpful again to to know the the journey that you've been a part of and that uh, that you're still developing yourself. You mentioned goals. I'd love to spend the last couple of minutes talking about the fellowship again. Really cool that we get to be a part of a team that helps scale and grow companies like yours across our state of Kentucky. And I would love to, to hear about how, you know, how Keith has maybe been, been your coach in, in this sense and talk about some of the stuff that, that you've grown as an entrepreneur with having maybe a bit more accountability or maybe to look at some of the, some of the other fellowship companies as your teammates that you're, you know, you're running through business building with in a sense. So yeah, let, let me, let me know and let the listeners know what are a couple of things that you've either been working on during your time in the fellowship or maybe some of your goals you're hoping to meet by the time you finish. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think traveling down the, the entrepreneurship road, um, can be sometimes a, a very lonely challenge. Um, you know, it's the, it's the monotony of how do you deal with the boredom? How do you, the, the, the boredom of, I've got to do this over and over and over until you see a result. And I think sometimes I, I struggle with that. And I think that's where the, the fellowship and, and working with Keith has, kind of kept me on track. Like, here's the, here's the bigger picture. Why are you here? And having to remind yourself of that. Um, you know, we're going on almost six years now and many of those days is just me and in my head and, and in the office, you know, Jackie and David, my partners are in Columbus, Ohio. Um, Don Skaggs, uh, local, um, local fellow from Kentucky runs Kentucky, uh, uh, or inventors network, Kentucky here in Lexington. He's in the office with me. But that's not every day. So I think it's those those days that you're by yourself and, you know, you, you're trying to battle what's in your head every, you know, what do I do next? H how do I know where to go? How do I know that's exactly what I'm supposed to do? Most of the time I don't. I think that's where the fellowship has really helped me um, identify a, you know, a, a clear path to, hey, let's focus on these things. This is why we're focusing on them. And then Keith being able to, to hold us accountable in those monthly meetings has been helpful. Um, you know, I think the, the other companies in the, the fellowship, everybody's fighting their, their, you know, their own battle, but I think seeing how those other companies are overcoming the situations that they're in and, and just seeing the problems that they're facing. Um, you know, I think when everybody gets together and you don't really think much of it until, until you start talking and you realize like, wow, you guys are in, uh, I don't know, cosmetics or you're in at building for sports or, um, you know, you guys are doing some crazy high level algorithms that I don't even know what it means when you're talking, but everybody's facing the same problems in a sense. And I think just having, having that support network has been very, very beneficial. The thing that makes this fun is you're, you're doing life with people. And, uh, I spoke with, I spoke with Justin of 13 layers, Justin Perrin. Again, he was one of the guys in the retreat with us as well. And he's in the fellowship and he was talking about, Hey, I, I do cybersecurity to prevent people from losing their jobs. That that's my why. And that's what I care about. So just to hear in a sense, you know, that, that mundaneness, it's, it's tough, but you know, you're in the hunt right now and, you know, 
fast forward 10 years and you're gonna look back and think about all those times of, Hey, doing those same one day tasks like that, that is going to be the memories or those will be the memories that you look back and you'll be grateful for. And you, you will miss those times. But so, you know, it's good to know that you're enjoying them now, but you're also growing with people through those. I think that's, you know, I think personally that's been, um, one of my main goals for 23 is to, to build those habits that those, those positive, good habits that make those mundane tasks a little bit easier, um, because they're necessary. If you stop them, you're not going to get to the next step. And so, um, I think that's, you know, as a personal growth, I think that's, that's where I've been focused. Um, you know, business growth, we, you know, we want to go from, from where we are to 10 X to 10 X. Um, but it definitely just doesn't happen overnight. It, it, it takes that routine effort. Um, so that's, I think that's my main goal for myself that's great. over this next, you know, several months. Bennett, as we're going to wrap up here, let, uh, let people know who are listening, how they can, they can find more out about active therapy systems or even be maybe a potential customer for themselves or a, a loved one. And maybe some of what you shared sparked some interest of, Hey, maybe I myself need to get into to better shape. Yeah, of course. Um, so, you know, we cater to those struggling with Parkinson's and their caregivers. Um, we do continuing education courses for clinicians uh, and for providers, uh, we offer solutions that are, you know, cash pay or covered by insurance for your patients. So if, if any of that can help you, or if you know anybody that could benefit from what we do offer, visit, visit us at totalhealthworks.com. Uh, there's a, um, contact form at the bottom of the page that goes directly to me. So if you fill out that form with your name and your number, um, I, I will contact you. Uh, I think, I think there's a lot of people that can benefit from what we offer. Um, it's a growing, growing problem and it's growing fast. And so any, any, any little bit of help with, would be great. Sweet. Well, Bennett, appreciate, appreciate you sharing your story and letting people get some insight into, to what you've been working on and what you've been accomplishing. And again, proud of the work you're doing. It might not always be the sexy glitz glam, you know, startup life people, but it's all, it's, it's impacting people, which is the most important aspect. And then for those of you listening, as always, head on over to awesomeinc.org or check us out on all socials at Awesome Inc. Lex to find more entrepreneur stories like that of Bennett and the Active Therapy Systems team and just great work going on across Kentucky. So Bennett, thanks for the time, man. Yep. You're stud and keep at it. Thanks, G, as always. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Awesome Inc.'s podcast. And another quick thank you to Lee Rosevere and a few members from our community, who provide the music that you hear in this show. Lastly, give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz, or even better, come on down to our space. Come be a part of our community and get plugged in and let's start something awesome together. You guys rock. We'll see you next time.